as we move into this time of meditation. Take those hands that you just applauded with and kind of vibrated and titillated with your energy field and open them into a receptive posture. For what we've been saying is, I am ready to receive. The I am of you, beloved, is the same source that each and every one of us has. Oh, that you would open wide to that source and allow the flow to move through you. But the truth is flow happens. Whether we've created a tiny, tiny aperture and egress, or we've opened a hose fully, But to live like the Sea of Galilee, where the Jordan River, the source water, is flowing into you, and you allow that water to flow. It ripples over stones and pebbles of experience. Some of it seeps into the rootedness of the river, the sands. Some of that is rounded through experience and some disappear. But that water in the Sea of Galilee flows all the way out the other side to bless others. Thus is our abundance. And there is also a place where the Jordan flows into a body of water where there is no egress. We call that the Dead Sea. For the water that comes there has no place to go. It doesn't flow. It becomes stagnant. You know how that feels. Stagnant with belief. Oh, I can't love her. I can't love him. I can't forgive that, I can't forget this. And it sits and becomes dense and heavy and discolored. The miracle of water though, as Masuro Imoto showed us, is that the moment we shift our perspective and simply bless the truth, use the truth, even those parts of us that had not yet allowed the light in become enlightened. The pure crystalline structure of us with thought, with unbelief that has become belief, with faith that we thought was way too little. We remember it's always enough. And the way is made open. That coming in and that going out is through you, beloved. No one else, just you. And so being willing to receive, being ready to receive, means to open yourself to ways of being that you've not yet, you've thought about maybe or not even thought of. That oh, you could bring your spiritual practice here to this and to that, to him and to her. By allowing love to simply flow freely, openly. And so allow now in, in a time of some quiet for you to witness this flow of love as you sit in this receptive posture that there's nothing you need to do actually but to let go any thought that you couldn't or can't just being with God all things are possible and allow God to be God flowing through you now in stillness. In quiet.
We thank you, God, for this time to practice your presence in our lives. And we remember that we can use this any time we feel pain in our body or in our mind, or thoughts we're holding it against ourselves or others. We can simply be still. A nanosecond. And let there be more of God in that space. And for this, we're so grateful. As we say, thank you, God, let's, let's whisper that into this space together. Thank you, God. And we thank you, God, for all that we have, all that we are, all that we give, and all that we receive. In your name. I see we move right into the talk here, right out of the meditation. Uh, it's beautiful. I, I love the comment about Good Friday. Um, I, so Sunday, but I, we had a little misspelling. Um, at Unity of Roanoke Valley, where I was, my first church, I was there 13 years. And the very first year, you know, the, the, we were up on 28 acres on the top of a mountain now it's just outside, well, in Roanoke, Virginia, but towards Salem. And um, people, a lot of people had heard that there were things going on on that hillside that were a little, very Bible Belt area, you know. It's like, whoa, are you going to get go up there and see what's going on? And, of course, we did things to draw people to us. But there are a lot that were very unsure. And we had, um, I think, uh, the reputation of our having our uh, burning bowl service had gone out. And we would draw people from lots of different churches and temples. It was, it was a great population. The very, and I'd been told this as the history of the church. So the very first New Year's uh, burning bowl that I was there, they put an, I said, well, let's put an ad in the paper so that everyone will know that it's happening and will draw even more people that have never been up. And so we had record numbers that year, unbelievable. And someone drew to my attention as they came into the service that they were really curious because they had read about it in the paper. Apparently there was a typo, and rather than saying burning bowl, it said burning bowel. So they were wondering, what are those people up there at Unity doing with a burning bowel service? Uh, record numbers of people wrote down what they were letting go and letters to God. And our population increased exponentially. Uh, but the next year we did have a burning bowl service. So yeah, thank God. <laughs> it was hysterical. So good Friday. Uh, what's that? Uh, Eric Butterworth at whom I just love. Uh, he wrote Discover the Power Within You. He wrote Spiritual Economics. And I know you study all the books here. You're studying prosperity? Is that with Just Finished Prosperity by the Fillmore. So beautiful, beautiful. On the back of this book, and this is all, this is Spiritual Economics. And Eric Butterworth uh, spoke at Avery Fisher Hall. I heard him many times when I was a little girl. We used to go up there to New York to hear him. He was absolutely is a no-nonsense presence in the unity movement in your life. And so if you're ever wondering about something, you can look at Eric Butterworth's work, and he will just, boom, he just says it like it is. And he says on the back is a quote from the book, and it says this. Get it into your consciousness that you live in substance as a fish lives in water. Can the fish of the sea ever lack for water? Can you, having your being in the sea of God's substance, ever really lack for a sufficiency of creativity or ideas or money or opportunities in any time of need? What do you think? Is it possible to lack in a kingdom that is, uh, right? All sufficient. Everything that I've ever received, I've gotten from this kingdom. How about you? 
yeah? And everything I've given, everything I've received, it's all substance, it's all energy that we circulate. And it's a beautiful thing. Um, our talk this today is called, How Big Is Your Cup? You see the array of cups. We're gonna pretend this has a handle on it and it's a big honking cup. Um, <laughs> So but would you all agree that we come from the same source energy? Yes. And if that being the case, then we all have abundance flowing through us. And we know when we have gotten really diminished feeling about that, right? Like, oh, I don't have enough. And I don't know. Nah, nah, nah. There's an incredible scripture about that for us. Economists have vast difference of opinions about what drives our economy. And this, by the way, you have your own personal economy. You are living in an economic uh, experience right now. But they all agree, and listen to this quote, by reason of the law of sequence and consequence. Did you ever think about the word consequence? Yeah, uh-huh. So it's con is Spanish for with. So with sequence. Sequence and consequence are cycles and they move through us and they all start somewhere. They all start right here and now. And so there are conditions that we as consumers go through, of course, while we live on the earth plane. There's buying and selling, there's the job market, there's inflation, there's stocks and trading, uh, there's health and illness and there's all those things going on. But each and every one of those are a direct reflection of the beliefs we're holding and the unbeliefs that we're holding. And now this is not a time when we spin off in metaphysical or do the metaphysical malpractice. This isn't like that. Life happens. The flow of God's presence happens. It's what we allow in and through us as that flow is. It's what we allow in and allow out that, that is a sign of our prosperity. So prosperity is the free flow of potentiality right? And lack of prosperity is just frustrated potential. It's that uh, proverbial, you know, stepping on the hose, right? And I don't know why there's no water coming out. And the, you know, take your foot. Okay, that was really easy. So the question is, how big is your cup? Because if we're, it's flowing all the time, what are you with belief or understanding or very often it's ingrained ways of thinking that you're not enough and of course you can't have that and all those things that we come to life with a, sometimes a very small cup, sometimes we come with a very big cup. But I'm going to ask if there's two people who would play with me. There are two people who step up here and play with me. Come on. Come on up here. Got two players. Okay, the first stop, get to play. <laughs> okay, we got two. All right, here we go. So, um, so I, I'm going to ask if you would just be with these cups. Now, now, the flow of God's presence and power is everywhere all the time, right? So, I mean, if you pick a small cup, this, you're still in the flow, right? If you pick a big one, you're still in the flow. But it, for all appearances on the earth plane, you will have more at your fingertips, right? Depending upon the size of the cup. What cup are you resonating with? What one would you like to pick up? You gotta pick the big one. Oh, oh take it out, take it out. And you're gonna take the tall one. Read what's on that tall one. Oh, glass, trust, glass. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What's on the other side? Anything? Oh, shoot. That's the yeah. last thing, isn't it? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Oh. Pro Proverbs, yeah. So, Trust so what's the on the other side of it? Same thing. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now, this is interesting because I asked you guys to go ahead and pick up the one that you resonate with. Is there another way you could do this? Let's put them back here for a second. You're in the, both in the same flow. You're in the same community. You're family with each other. And you're looking at the containers that are available. What's another way that you could address this? Oh, I can share her. <gasps> you could share? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so you picked up the bowl first. Go ahead. Pick that up. The bowl? Yeah. Oh, and Cindy would like to share it with you. Oh, check it out. So this is really, this is like a synopsis. This is the cliff notes of what unity teachings, this is what it means, right? And we got newcomers here. I know everybody isn't new to unity, but we got some new. Unity is a, 
it is living in the world of this or that, we think we have to choose. We think there's a certain size and we get only one slice or somebody else gets a couple slices. You get all of them, right? Cindy, just grab that from you. I saw that. I kind of saw that happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the truth is we are in a both and situation. We are a this and that situation. And what we're really learning to do is, do you want to have that? Okay. You can have, it is a cute cup. You can have any of these cups except this one, which somebody said they were going to take from me when I walked in with it. I said, oh, yeah. Um, anyway, thank you for playing with me. But the point is, it's a this and that, and we're here to share the kingdom and share our abundance. Can we give these guys a round of applause for playing the game? Thank you. Um, how big is your cup? Your personal aware f welfare uh, begins, of course, with your state of mind, how you're thinking about things. So your own economic trends is simply the divine opportunity for you to give and receive God, to give and receive good in every situation, to give and receive love, to give and receive the presence of God in every situation that we move into. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. It's Joshua 24, 15 says, choose this day, though. Choose this day whom you will serve. And that's the thing. It's wonderful to know these truths and go, oh, yeah, oh, I feel so warm and fuzzy. I went to unity today, and it was great. And then go out and just get really pissy in line at the grocery store or, you know what I mean? And not practice at all. It's like, wait, 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 wait. So Joshua says, choose this day, meaning this moment in this experience, in this relationship, through this situation, choose whom you will serve. Will you stay in that consciousness that says, oh, yeah, I'm the living Christ and I can be... Paul Hasselbeck spoke uh, two Sundays ago. I went to my former church at Unity of Naples, and Reverend Paul Hasselbeck was there, and he said something I thought was so cool, because choose this day means not this or that. It means this and that. Choose to, no matter what you're in doing in your life, to use your divine economy to exchange in a way that says that you and I both deserve all good that is here. You and I can share out of this truth and this knowing. Paul said this, he said, you know, he said about vagueness, he said, listen, 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 what happens in vagueness stays in vagueness. <laughs> I love that. It's like, yeah. Right? If we're going to be wishy-washy about it, you guys did not come up here, thank you very much, and say, no, 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 I can't actually choose a bowl. You know, I don't know how, what the size of my cup is. I'm not going to play the game of life. You just said, yeah, I'll play. I'll choose one, and I'll learn along the way. So what happens in vagueness stays in vagueness. And we want to do, we want to do something. The cool thing is that whether you're plussing or minusing in your life, and that's what we do. Math is the same everywhere. It's simple. You, I, we add and we subtract. We add and we subtract. So by thinking, by how you're applying your thoughts, you're either plussing a situation, you're making positive thoughts about it, you're in a syntropic pattern, or you're in an entropic pattern. You're taking yourself down the proverbial rabbit hole. Anybody here ever done this? Raise your hand with me, please. Right? How many have we... That's entropic thinking. So that's minusing. But here's the thing. Either way, if you're plussing, or your mind is seen, you are compounding interest by holding that thought. That's what's happening. You are creating a situation in which you're just taking yourself down or you're taking yourself up. That's one of the reasons we have community. It's one of the reasons we have friends, to remember that everything is an everyday miracle. And we can expect that miracle to take place. It's not something unusual. Miracles are the natural way of being, right? As we call that unto ourselves, we remember we discover the power within us, and in the moment that we're minusing, usually starts with ourselves, we hear what's going on. We allow ourselves to witness what we're doing, and then if we need to make amends, we make amends, and we move forward by plussing that situation, by getting into that 
uh, that symbolic language that says, you know what, I am magnetic and this universe is magnetic and I'm going to draw unto me that which I have. You already have the love of God. You already are loving. You already are love all ball. That is what you are drawing to yourself as you say, yes, that's, that's what I have. I have more than enough. There's more than enough love. There's more than enough joy. There's more than enough solutions to every situation. There's more than enough, always. There's a scripture that has, uh, appears to be a great injustice, and it refers to what we're talking about today. And uh, some, it can seem like it means the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Listen to it. Listen to it for your practice, because you are a practitioner uh, of the truth. Matthew 25. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not, even that which he has shall be taken away. Now, I know that's, that's a language that some of us don't speak very often. <laughs> but what it means is, if I say, I have all that I need, and not as an overlay or a whitewash or something like that, but I really, I have everything I need. I may not see it right now, but I know that I am moving in this abundant field of life. I have everything I need. That knowing calls unto us everything we could possibly ever need. Duh. Hello, magnetic universe. For those who have not, that means if I'm going, oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't have that. I don't have that. Are we right? Yes. In the immediate truth, that's absolutely right. In the greater truth, it's just an absolute misnomer. So know that that scripture is actually for you. It's just a reminder that if you find yourself saying, eh. this was one of the teachings that Jesus taught to the disciples, and they were really, can I say pissed off in church? <laughs> they, were, they were pissed off with Jesus. They Actually, in John 6, it says, Many of the disciples drew back and no longer went about with him. They just said, Okay, I'm quitting. I'm right here. I'm going to take up my fishing pole and go back to being a fisherman or whatever else was taking place. I cannot believe that. Because their God was a God of, you know, a good God for some and a punitive God for others, a God that blessed some and didn't bless others, and you had to follow the rules and regulations. So put that shrimp down. Don't you dare eat that, right? Or else, you know, it's going to happen, right? But Jesus knew differently than that. He was like, no, 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 no. There is a magnetic truth here. This is your, your, the, I am here with you always, and you have everything you need. Those who were magnetized by that truth returned and became the disciples that followed. Jesus taught, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what do you think? How big is your cup? Are you willing to share your magnificence with others? Are you willing to share, even if you don't know, are you willing to be curious? And go, I wonder how God's going to do that. That's going to be interesting, or, right? It's always, fat. God's a hoot. I want, how is this going to happen? I don't know. Are you willing to stay open and receptive, like your song said, receptive to your good, receptive to love? If something's hurting, are you willing to pour love into that place with your breath, your very way of being, your thinking? Are you willing to do that? Because your universe is your life. Your worldview determines your experience here. Um, it's not a huge machine, this universe, that's just wearing out. That's entropic thinking. It's not one piece of pie for this person and a piece of pie for this person and this person goes hungry. No, we are here to learn. And I think sharing is really the, that's the, the cutting edge. Don't you agree? For us on this earth place now, uh, especially having come through COVID and feeling so separated from others and realizing that where we were, God was right there with us. And then we have the privilege and blessing of coming back to each other, having only been able to see each other's eyes for a while. 
and remembering, oh my gosh, those are the eyes of God. Not even needing to read the rest of the face or even see the body on Zoom and uh, all these things. We don't even need that. We can be in each other's presence whether we're physically together or not physically together. That's syntropic thinking. That's the knowing that we are stayed on God and God has stayed on us and we will move through whatever's before us. That's the free flow of God's love. So today we're remembering that we live in, I'm going to use a word we haven't, I haven't used at all today, that we live in grace, that you live under grace. This and something even better is taking place in your life. And if you're moving through, we can't know really what each and every one of us is moving through. We're so many levels of us, right? We're these multi-leveled spiritual beings who appear to be in one place, but we know we're not even just in these bodies. We're, we're experiencing things on so many levels. If you, uh, for one minute, think that you're outside that, it's time to simply reel yourself back in. Perhaps by sharing what you have with others, you'll remember the truth. Perhaps by holding someone who's going through a, a difficult experience in your heart, you don't even have to be with them, don't even have to speak with them, that you realize <coughs> that all that you have I have a drink of water. You can use this. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> no, oh no, I'll do it this way. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Let's all do that together. We're just one second here. You see, if just one of us is given a drink, we all feel the living water move. You are an ingress and an egress. Is that even a word, ingress? I think it is. And egress. You are the, the channel through which God pours itself. May you share the liquidity of God with each and every one that you encounter this day. And continue to do that every day while you're on the planet. Would you, would you, would you, would you? Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Thank you, God, and bless you. I'm so grateful to be here today. God bless. As we move into our time of offering, I'm going to invite the ushers forward. And let us remember that we are the ingress and the egress of God's love and prosperity and joy and fulfillment as we say our blessing of the gifts together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so. Amen, and it is so.